If you've taken any kind of intro biology class, you've probably heard of ATP described as energy currency because it contains a high energy phosphate bond. During metabolism, ATP is broken down or hydrolyzed by water into ADP and free phosphate. In classrooms and even in textbooks, the breaking of this bond is said to release energy that the cell can use. However, if you've ever taken any kind of chemistry class, you probably also learned that breaking bonds causes an unfavorable disruption of covalent interactions and requires energy, and that the formation of new bonds is what releases energy. So how can ATP store energy in its bonds? It can't! Turns out that everything you learned is a lie. Not to worry though, there is hope. Imagine you want some bacon, but you know that bacon takes time to cook. Even if you don't feel like cooking, you know that once you have that bacon, it will provide you with a full stomach, warmth, love, and happiness. However, the bacon does not contain all those good things, but they are the results of the cooking process. Similarly, ATP does not contain energy, but energy is released when ATP is broken down. Let's take a closer look. In biochemistry, the description of energy that is most often used is called Gibbs free energy, which refers to energy that is available to do work. Gibbs free energy depends on the amount of disorder in the system and the number of bonds broken and formed, also known as the enthalpy of bond formation. Products and reactants of a reaction exist at free energy states with corresponding Gibbs free energy values. A reaction with a negative change in free energy is highly favorable and will proceed spontaneously. A reaction that is not spontaneous can be made spontaneous if it is grouped together with a spontaneous reaction. This concept is called reaction coupling, and this is what makes ATP the energy currency of the cell. However, it is important to understand that there are no units of energy stored in the bonds of ATP. ATP is thermodynamically unstable, meaning that its hydrolysis is highly energetically favorable. Even though it costs energy to break the original bonds, three molecules are formed from two starting molecules, ADP, free phosphate, and a free proton, which contributes to an increase in disorder, allowing the reaction to occur spontaneously. So if ATP breaks down spontaneously, how can it exist in its triphosphate form? Well, this is because ATP is kinetically stable with a high activation energy barrier. ATP exists in a very high energy state, and its hydrolysis does not occur immediately in the body without the help of enzymes. However, since reactions favor going from higher free energy states to lower free energy states, which are more stable, the hydrolysis of ATP does meet these criteria because less energy is required to break those bonds than is required to put ADP and free phosphate back together. Let's recap. When ATP is broken down into ADP and phosphate, some bonds are broken and new bonds are formed. The breaking of these bonds requires free energy, just like any other bond. The formation of new bonds makes more free energy available to do work in the surroundings. When the free energy of bond formation is greater than the free energy required to break bonds, the net free energy is negative. So the truth about those so-called high energy phosphate bonds is that even though they require energy to be broken, the overall hydrolysis reaction is quite favorable. It is easy to understand why textbooks and educators use the shorthand of high energy phosphate bonds, but still, our friend ATP shows us how important it is to use clear and precise language, even when the processes that we are describing can get kind of complicated. Thanks for learning about energy with us today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to keep learning about amazing biochemical phenomena.
Okay. Okay, is that good for that? I think we're good. Cut that. Is the handwriting legible?